Okay, we're going to talk about strategies to prepare for the ACT science section in the screencast. And uh, I'm going to give you an overview of the science section and talk about what types of passages, what types of questions in the passages, and uh, hopefully give you a little bit of strategy on how to prepare for the test. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to know is 40 questions on the science section test in total. You have 35 minutes to complete those questions. So that's less than one minute per question. So it's a section of the test where you really got to keep moving and you got to have a strategy on how you approach it to get through and do your best on those 40 questions. The three types of passages you're going to have are a data representation section or passage. passage. There's three of those. I call this section graphs and charts. And then you have a second type of passage called... Um, research summaries. There's also three of those. I call this the experiments type passage because it always has one or two experiments in that passage that you're comparing or answering questions about. Lastly, there is only one conflicting viewpoints passage. I call this arguing scientists or arguing students uh, because there's always two opinions, two theories, two hypotheses that you have to compare and contrast and interpret the uh, scientist's viewpoint. That one uh, has seven questions. The other two, the experiments passage, will have six questions per passage. There's three of those sections. That's 18 questions. The uh, graphs and charts typically has five questions for each graphs and chart passage times three passages would be 15 total graph and chart questions, and then seven in that last section, there's your 40 questions. Uh, so we're going to talk about each one of these passages and the questions in those passages uh, one at a time. This is the first type of passage. It's the graphs and charts passage, and I'm not going to go through the passage. I just want you to be able to recognize this type of passage when you get to it. Obviously, graphs in this case, or you might have some charts. So when you see two graphs like this, you know you're in a graphs and charts passage. And uh, what's important about that, identifying the type of passage, is we're going to have different strategies for each passage. For the graphs and charts passage, I would recommend not reading the passage before you try to answer the questions. You only have 35 minutes for the 40 questions. You have to economize your time. And in this type of passage, most times you can go right to the questions, read the question, go back to the passage to try and find the information or to the charts, in most cases, or graphs, and answer the question. So recognizing that your section is a charts and graphs passage lets you understand the strategy is going to be to go right to the questions. A lot of times the x-axis scale is going to be the same if they give you two different graphs so you can compare at a glance the trends on the same scale. You don't have to try and interpret um, the, the scale on two different graphs. And keep in mind there's a key, so each one of those um, different types of points here represents a different uh, graph, a different data set. Types of questions in the graphs and charts, factual questions. They simply ask you to relay factual information that's presented in the passage, a lot of times right from the graph or the chart. So that's why I would recommend not necessarily reading first, just go to the question and go back and look for the answer on the graph. Here's a sample question that you can get the answer directly from one of the graphs or charts. Another type of question that you'll encounter in the graphs and charts section is interpreting trends. This is uh, where you're going to evaluate the graph or the table and decide what the relationship is between the two variables on the x and the y axis. Are, is it an increasing relationship as the x value gets bigger? Does the y value also get bigger? Or as the x value increases, is the y value decreasing? That will help you interpret the graph, and um, the question will typically ask you to uh, look at that graph and interpret it. Again, you don't need to read the passage to be able to interpret the graph. And I should note also that in the science section, they don't expect you to have a pre-existing knowledge of these topics, whether it's chemistry, biology, physics. You don't have to have the pre-existing knowledge. It's just being able to digest information to understand data and to be able to interpret trends and interpret graphs and charts in a lot of cases, or to be able to read the hypotheses of two different scientists and be able to uh, 
process that and understand the perspective that each one is coming from. So we'll talk about that section a little bit later. But you don't have to have an existing knowledge. The third type of question, <coughs> excuse me, in the graphs and charts uh, section are calculations. And they're going to ask you um, to, you know, if, if you're given the data and if they give you a value of x, what might happen to y? So you might have to do what's called extrapolation or interpolation of data. Extrapolation is trying to predict based on a trend. Um, in this case, um, if you see a decreasing trend here, a lot of times they'll ask you about a point way out here and what would happen in the future. And that is called extrapolating off of a graph. So this is actually um, month by um, the disposition or the wet deposition of the uh, substance. So you'd actually be able to um, extrapolate some information maybe in the future. It's, it's trending towards zero. That would be called extrapolation when you're uh, predicting a y value that's beyond the range of the x values. Interpolation is where you actually have two points on a graph. Let's say it's this point here and this point here, and it asks about a point in between those two. So interpolation is finding a data point, a y value, on the graph that's in between two given x values. That would be interpolation. So that's kind of what the calculation questions will be like. The second type of passage of the three is called the, uh, this, this calls it a research summary. I call it the experiments type question. Usually they'll give you one or two experiments and ask you to focus on those and to answer some questions about them. So this is also another section in most cases where you'll be able to uh, in, uh, answer the questions first without reading the passage. If you get to a question, uh, we'll talk about the different types of questions in this passage. If there's a question you can't answer in this uh, passage, you may want to circle it and come back to it. So um, the three types of questions that you've got, experimental design uh, question, where we'll ask you to, why did the researcher design the experiment a certain way, and what controls and variables are in the experiment, or what is the hypothesis on which the experiment is based. A lot of times you can look at the description of the experiment uh, briefly in the passage and answer these questions without having read the entire passage. Second type of question is the hypothetical um, type question where it asks you to determine, you know, what might happen if there was a change in some variable, some, something like temperature or concentration of a solution or something like that. And this, uh, this requires that you understand the trend of the data, kind of like that extrapolation example I gave earlier in the graphs and charts section. So understanding the trend of the data in the experiment and being able to predict what would happen hypothetically if something changed. The last section in the experiments type passage is interpreting the experiment and the action to interpret information that you're given. So um, sometimes these are a little more challenging that require you to go back to the passage and read a little bit. So if you get to an interpretation question in the experiments passage, you may want to circle it and come back to it uh, as opposed to spending a whole lot of time. Remember, you've got less than a minute per multiple choice question in this section. You may want to circle it and come back to it. Um, you can always go back um, if you get to a question that you're trying to answer at the end of the, of the 35 minutes and you're, you're getting those last couple questions done. Go back to the passage and try to find where, you know, the paragraph that talks about the specific uh, interpretation that you're being asked for. And uh, instead of reading the whole passage, just try to find the paragraph that talks about the question, the content of the question. Uh, the last type of passage, the arguing scientists or arguing students, is the most different from the other two. It's le the least quantitative, the fewest numbers, the most qualitative. So it looks like an English passage almost, and you do have to read the passage on this one. So I would highly recommend when you get to the arguing science type passage, you go ahead and read the passage first before trying to answer the section. I would always do this passage, also recommend doing this passage last. So save this for last. If it's the first one of the seven that you come to, skip it, do the other six and come back to it. If it's the fifth one, do the first four, skip it, do the last two and come back to it. The reason is the other questions and the other passages will take you less time 
to get through. So it's a bigger bang for your buck time-wise to get done with all of those questions and come to this passage last. There are seven questions here always, and they ask you to compare and contrast two different students or scientists' opinions about something. Um, for example, <clears throat> understanding um, the uh, viewpoints is one of the ways that you have to uh, interpret the, the two students or scientists' opinions or comparing the viewpoints. So, uh, again, qualitative understanding theories and hypotheses and being able to compare and contrast them and synthesize some of that uh, information that's being given to you that's not necessarily numbers, more words. So uh, I hope I gave you some strategies to be able to attack the AT ACT science section, uh, recognizing what type of passage you have, having a strategy that maybe is a little different between different passages, and being able to answer uh, questions um, and knowing what the different types of questions are. So good luck.